We have arrived in defence of the founder homeworld Impersa at Odo's behest. Our plan was to synthesise a cure for the Herc Madness based on Ketracel White, which had been derived from their ecosystem. However, Wayun put a crimp in that plan when he destroyed the equipment we had painstakingly brought to the heart of the Herc Dreadnought. Now, with our away teams battered and defending Julian Bashir as he tries to improvise a solution, we have returned to the Armager because, as always, more Herc are inbound. Well, well, you're in quite a fix there, Odo. Brilliant observation, Quark. What do you want? Forgive my brother, Odo. We're here to help. The Ferengi Cavalry? <laughs> I thought I'd seen everything. Ho <laughs> ho. The best is yet to come, Odo. Say hello to my dangerous friends. Well, Cork, we're waiting. Rom, where are they? Lose something, like your nerve, perhaps? Long ago, Takuvma the Unforgettable lit the beacon of Kalos to restore glory to the Empire. Today, a new torchbearer, Worf, son of Moog, does the same. United, we now go to fight the enemy of our ancestors. Today, we will fight the Herc. I now hold the weapon they fear most. The sword of Kalos has been returned to us. Join me now in honorable combat. Show the Herc what it truly means to be Klingon. For Kalos, for the Empire, Kapla! You know, considering that I had no idea the Klingons were on their way, I'm beginning to think that mission I undertook to retrieve the sword of Kalos with Quark's help wasn't Starfleet Sanction. Nevertheless, this wave of aid greatly increases our odds of success. They are still not that high, however, as the Herc continue to pour into the system driven by some ancient rage against the Founders, now that they know where to find their adversary. The largest vessel of the Klingon fleet we saw was that Nektev battlecruiser, but despite not being the most powerful vessel the Klingons have fought to the fray, Martok retains his captaincy of the IKS Rotaran a Burrell bird of prey. The arrival of the Klingons has given us more time in space, but the situation on the surface is dire. Herc's forces are breaking the Jem'Hadar defense lines. We need to do what we can to help. I'm beaming directly to the Great Link to aid my people. Hold up, I'll join you down there. The time has come. The Herc mean to ravage everything in their path. We will not allow it. We will stand against them as Kalos once stood. Defiant and proud. Fight well. And if need be, die well. Kapla! So, with the Herc forces cleared from this area, at least we take the opportunity to break away from the defenders to move down to the planet's surface. The Armager will then continue to engage the Herc in orbit and keep our captured Dreadnought safe, weathering the storm overhead while we wade into the maelstrom below. Whom do we seek? Kalos! How do we find him? Together! Kalos, give us light to see forever! Will he hide from us always? Never! It's worse than we thought. Most of the Jem'Hadar lines have been broken. Even the Great Link is in danger. I'm going to coordinate our defenses at the Link. Meet me there. All right, good luck, Ambassador. Don't get eaten. We'll meet you there as soon as we can. And Odo, be careful. The Jem'Hadar have come to our aid. Now, we will return the favor. Let's hope we survive long enough to do so. We can see that the battle is already well underway as expected. There are many wounded Jem'Hadar. 
and our away teams are being deployed planet side but it's a meagre reinforcement. Our best group is still in orbit but if we lose the Great Link down here then the entire command chain of the Dominion collapses. In another time this would have been an amazing tactical advantage for the Federation but not in the face of the mindless hordes of the Herc and not when we stand to the chance to finally broker peace with the Dominion. Stealing ourselves for the onslaught we know lies ahead, we head out into the battlefield. And it's not long before we run into our first opposition. Backyard aggressors, mechrids, and waves of attendants. We fight alongside Martok's strike team while the Jem'Hadar continue to battle to protect the gods from their predecessors, and when the dust settles we talk to the standing survivors. You fight well. Good. There are many hurt between us and the Great Lake. We go there now to reclaim our lives, for we are already dead. Ah, yes, Jem'Hadar Creed. Um, victory is life and all that. tally -ho. Drawn by the sounds of battle, or let's be fair, who knows what. More Hercs sprawl from the rocky terrain to attack us. We advance another few meters before we're interrupted again by another wave of Herc. Unfortunately, while charging around to flank one particularly nasty Herc, I get ambushed by another swarm. So, taking completely by surprise, as I fall back on the age-old creed of when in doubt, photon grenades. We won't last long out in the open like this. Odo Tukira. We're fortifying our position near the Great Link. Understood. We're on our way. As we continue to battle our way through the valley, heading ever closer to the Link, the battle takes its toll. The Herc really are relentless, aggressive, and continue to push against us. We stop in to a shaded encampment to catch our breath after driving the Herc back that were besieging it, only to find that the only survivor is the Vorta commander. I must confess my surprise at well, it's seeing you here, on this, the homeworld of the gods. Truly, we are living in strange times. You'll forgive my boldness, but there are still founders under attack nearby. Can I count on you to aid them, and destroy the wretched creatures who would do them harm? Yes, of course. It's Leviosa. As smarmy as he sounded, he's not wrong. There are actually founders who have taken to the field in order to defend themselves. It's a rare sight, but we know from first-hand experience how dangerous a changeling can be in combat. We arrive to find one shapeshifter unable to retain solid form after fending off the Herc. We try to help it, but Kira interjects. I think we're too late. This changeling's losing morphogenic matrix stability. There are more friendly life signs nearby. We should do what we can for them. We spot another battle group just ahead. It's probably the same Jem'Hadar we encountered earlier, fighting to protect another founder in the field. I don't know you, son, but I thank you for your service. We seem to have provided enough of a distraction for it to run away. Well, at least I hope it remembers our aid. For the founders. We navigate around a split in the chasm and over a blasted ridge we come across a now familiar scene. The wail of a besieged founder cuts through the air. I strafe around to the right to get to the wounded changeling, dispatching several small attendants along the way but I don't think I'm going to be able to heal it whilst there are still Herc alive. Its cries are haunting and remind me of a different shape-shifting creature, but now is probably not the time to compare the Dominion's gods to the thing. Is this some sort of solid invasion? No, I mean, well, technically yes, but... We're not all the same, okay? Oh, well, there's gratitude for you. 
We follow this changeling who is making its way back to the link and are soon confronted with another layer to this skirmish. We must be getting close by now. I wonder how Odo fared against all these forces or did he just beam in closer to the link? Your timing is fortuitous. Solid. Well, I'm glad I could be of assistance. Liquid. Sloppy. Finally, the Great Link comes into view, the ocean of founders in their natural state in the heart and mind of the Dominion. The ominous skies are a burnt red and lightning crashes in the distance, but at least it looks like Odo and his team are safe and sound here. Well, for now. You made it. Good. We're going to need all the help we can get here. It looks like the Perk are focusing their attacks on the Link. I've called for reinforcements, but most of our lines have been overrun. We're going to make a stand here and hope the Doctor's plan is successful. If not, if we fail, this may be the day the Dominion dies. Well, I'd love to give a heroic and inspiring speech, but we already have incoming Herc transporter signatures. Please tell me you have more Jen'Hadar coming to help. The call's been sent, but they may not arrive in time. We'll do what we can with what we have, then. As always, until the end. I'm not sure I like the way you said that, Odo. Nerys, if we don't make it... Less emotional baggage, more firing! No, now is not the time for this discussion. Look around. There may not be a better time. I... Really? And I understand what you do. You do? Then you know how sorry I am for everything. Yes. And I forgive you. I know. I feel the same. While Kira and Odo undergo some much overdue emotional catharsis, the Klingons, Jem'Hadar and my awaiting fend off unending levels of Herc. Swarming attendants claw and slash, charging Herc attempt to gore us and all the wild debris and shrapnel rain down. We deploy every trick in our playbook, from temporal operative acquired fissures to the Nakul emergency shielding. We deploy Klingon designed fires from Grethor fire grenades and beaming reinforcements when we can. But just as we start to push the Herc back, more beam in. Martok takes to the front lines relying on his Batleth skills to fend off the pincers of the insects and Kalos' blade tastes Herc blood once again. But it's been a long day and the tide is relentless. See if you can get to the Zar. I'll get to the dock. Maurice, are you hurt? It's just a scratch. I'm fine. We're losing ground here, Odo. Keep fighting. We can't hold this position much longer. That's Jem Hadar for we're about to die, Doctor. Are you ready? Not without the Ketracel components needed for the cure. Ketracel? Yes. Wait! Stop! Is life.
Well, shit. It, it seems the battle is over, but how? What happened up there, Doctor? I believe Duke and Rex realized that his own body contained the Ketrosol material I needed to finalize the cure. He extracted what we needed at the cost of his life. Once the Herc were able to synthesize the cure, they came to their senses and called for an immediate ceasefire. Their forces are withdrawing as we speak. It's over, Odo. I won't say we've won, but it's over. Despite what all the explosions say, it does appear to be finished. There are no more Herc beaming in. I have been through a Klingon war, made a last stand against Iconians, battled megalomaniacs and apparitions, but this was a dire event. One I would not care to repeat. The trip back through the Gamma Quadrant, through the wormhole and to DS9 is mercifully uneventful giving us time to patch up our wounded. But many didn't make it back. There was nothing I could do for him on the Herc Dreadnought. The Ketracel extraction process was too devastating. Odo, you treated him like a son when we first found him on DS9, and I'm truly sorry. He didn't even have a name when he left us. I'll make sure the name he found is never forgotten. I remember his first days on the station. All he wanted to do was fight, didn't matter who. When he left, I thought I'd never see him again, or if I did, it'd be as enemies. The man I met years later still knew how to fight, but his reasons for doing so had changed dramatically. I'm proud to have known him. I wish I could have done more in the end. You did enough. You made a difference. I suppose you're right. I believe Nerys, uh, Captain Kira, was looking for you. She was at the Temple of the Prophets last I checked. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to pay my respects. We'll talk more later. Righto. I'll go see what the Captain wants. I would say words, but I only knew him as a soldier alongside us, which I guess for a Jem Hadar is... well, good enough. Doctor, Ambassador, on our walk through the station we have plenty of time to reflect and I hope what we just went through will not happen again. That was not a war, not being fought over ideas, land, beliefs or resources, it was more like fighting against a cruel force of nature, albeit one created by Dominion hands. In the temple we find Loris, Kaio Parker and Kira. And here we are, once again. It's been quite a journey, hasn't it? Oh yeah, you told me we'd be going on a trip, I didn't think it'd be quite so hectic. So what's next? Funny you should mention that. After we got back, Starfleet Command offered me a number of postings, even the center chair on one of those shiny new cruisers. <laughs> Tempting. Yeah, you don't knock them. But I chose to join the command staff here on DS9. Bajor and the Celestial Temple mean a lot to me, and this station is a good place to keep them both safe. Captain Kira of the Temple Guard. I am totally going to start telling people that's your official title now. And Odo wouldn't even be a light year away. Subtle, but you're not wrong. Odo and I have a lot to work out before we're back to where we were, but we've taken a few good steps in that direction. I think it'll work out. Eventually. <laughs> He's a hard man to read sometimes. Yeah, I'd say. I mean, he could literally melt his face, so it's impossible to read. That's probably not what you meant, though. I am mildly surprised to see Kaio Parker here, but even more so to see Loris. Hello again, my friend. It pleases me to see you. I have interesting news. I swear, if it's about joining the Dominion or the Herc... Thankfully, Herc, no. Rather, it involves the Orb of Peace that you returned with Kaio Parker. Oh. It has... Oh, no. ...spoken to me. Oh, no. I've been exploring the meaning of that experience with the Kai and Captain Kira. Uh -huh. They are, after all, experts on such matters. While we all find it curious that an orb of the Prophets would speak to a Vorta, we also agree it would be foolish to ignore it. 
Hmm. Yeah. No. They. 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 They are certainly things that. Yeah. With the blessings of Founder Odo, I have been transferred to this quadrant to continue my studies of the Orb and the Prophets. I shall also serve as Founder Odo's representative here. Diplomacy is my specialty, after all. I'm sure we'll be seeing one another again. May the blessings of the Founders and the Prophets be yours. Oh, yay, Pantheons are teaming up now, that's great. It is good to see you once more. I was hoping we'd have a moment to speak on an important matter before your duties take you back to the stars. Uh, what is it, your eminence? Please don't let me go after any more orbs. My thoughts often return to the Orb of Peace. It was no coincidence that it was found in the Gamma Quadrant, in the midst of two warring tribes. I believe it to be a message from the Prophets, one of guidance in troubled times. Sure, yes, you could definitely look at it like that. I mean, the it's in the name, peace and everything. I guess I'll leave the interpretation up to you. Now that the conflict with the Herc has ended, I feel it's time to explore this omen more thoroughly. The recent vision experienced by Loris is truly remarkable. That the Prophets would speak to Avorta. Again, this is no coincidence. Simply put, I believe the Orb is meant to broker a lasting peace between the people of our quadrants and the Dominion. I hope you're right, Eminence. There's just a lot of change that would have to happen first. Thank you for coming to visit. After all we've been through, it means a lot to have friends. Even if it reminds me of the ones we miss. Speaking of reunions, I think General Martok is leading the charge against the Bloodwine at Quarks. I'm sure he'd want to congratulate you on another glorious victory. May the Prophets watch over you. And you, Captain? Oh, that seems fairly self-evident. Hale has never been one for the orbs. His experiences with them have left him a little unnerved at the idea that some cosmic beings are possibly capable of pulling his strings and controlling him like he was a holodeck character or something. But if the hearts that intend to play with the prophets truly do want peace, then I don't see why it couldn't be. Scion from the gods or no. We'll be here at DS9 until my ship is repaired. Fortunately, I have exclusive rights to the hollow sim of the battle. The sales of that alone will cover the cost of repairs, and then some! <sighs> some days it's good to be the Grand Nagus. I imagine so. Don't forget to sell add-ons, that's where the real money is. I don't like to think about how close to disaster we were, though. Fortunately, there were people like you out there to bring us all back from the brink. All those adventures. You've got quite a story to tell. That reminds me. Have you ever considered making a hollow biography? I think your life story would be quite popular and profitable. I'll make you a very generous offer for the rights and cut you in on a share of the profits, say 25%. That is a very tempting offer, but no, people wouldn't believe it. And if they did, the temporal agency would want to see them. Suit yourself. The offer still stands if you change your mind. Mm, thanks for the offer. Oh, I'm so glad to see this come to an end. <laughs> but not as glad as everyone back on Ferenginar. It's a celebration of Rule 35 like no one's ever seen before. I mean, peace may be good for business, but things are really getting out of hand. <laughs> oh, inundated with work, I take When it. word got out that the Gamma Quadrant was open for business, the new Latinum Rush was on! open borders and free trade policies? <laughs> My husband was practically weeping with joy. <laughs> oh, poor Odo. He thought he had his hands full with Quark on DS9. <laughs> now he's going to have an entire quadrant full of Ferengi to deal with. <laughs> well, let's not try to actively encourage the most amiable founder to regret being so hospitable with his army, shall we? In the back of the bar, we can see Neth Parr of the Zenkethi, Captain Nog, and General Martok seemingly now having relinquished Kalos's sword. <laughs> we need to stop running into each other when the fate of the galaxy is on the line. I'd be fine with drinks here at Uncle's bar, or some baseball on the holodeck. That said, I can't think of too many people I trust when everything's on the line. Glad you are here for this. Likewise, so what's next for the son of the Nagus? Starfleet's assigned the Chimera to peacekeeping duty in Herc space. We'll be working with the Joint Task Force to help the Herc get back on their feet again as well. There's a lot to be done, but we want to help them rejoin the galactic community. 
I imagine that's going to mean a lot of work. A lot of wounds to heal as well on both sides. It is, but my crew is up for the challenge. They're some of Starfleet's best. Take care of yourself out there. Don't be a stranger. It's good to know your story doesn't end. Neth, I'm sorry, but are you playing Darbo? I am forever indebted to you. Without your efforts, I would walk the path of exile for the rest of my days. Now, I will help make amends for all that has happened during Zencast's terrible crusade. Well, be sure to make the most of it, although I imagine your people still aren't too happy with you. Oh, and go easy on the Darbo. Don't be indebted to me and Quark at the same time. A hard-fought battle and a well-earned victory. And yet, we almost missed it. Our fleet would have never left the Empire if it weren't for the sword's return. Grilka tells me her former mate, Quark, had something to do with that. The sacred blade of Kalis, returned to the Empire by a Ferengi. Madness! He's staring right at you. But yeah, no, it's true. And Worf helped as well? Yes, it was Worf's idea to ignite the beacon of Cadus. A bold move, but it paid off. Only a coward could refuse such a call to arms. Indeed, and you arrived. Where was Trimpok? The legend of Cadus is stronger than ever. It would not surprise me if the High Council moved to create a new clone of the Emperor. There is great power in legend, after all. I am not sure how I feel about another clone of Kalis. Except it's not my business. Welcome back. Seeing as this is a private party and I'm in an unusually generous mood, you'll be getting the VIP discount on your drinks tonight. Well, thank you. Wait, hang on. They're not on the house? Did you take a hit to the head in that fight? I'm in a good mood. Not insane. Half off. Take it or leave it. I took several hits to the head, thank you, and fine. That's more like it. Don't take it personally. You could be Odo. His drinks? 50% markup. Okay. Seems fair. He also doesn't drink. So, about that sort of Kalis that you had me retrieve, um... Not much to tell, really. Lex saw the error of his ways and gave it back. Mm -hmm. Then I had Grilka let Martok and Worf mm -hmm. know we'd recovered the vicious rock. Uh -huh. A quick handoff later and the Klingons were off to war. Rom and I tagged along, mainly to see the look on Odo's face when I rode in with the cavalry. That was priceless. If I die tomorrow, I'll go to the Exchequer with a smile on my face. Well, that was very generous and noble of you. And profitable, I guess. Who do you think you're talking to? Nog? Unlike the Federation, the Klingons know of the value of Latinum. I'm thinking of spending my cut on a smaller moon to orbit the one I already have. I might even name it Odo. Wow, naming a moon after him, it's... Almost like your pesties or something. Can I get you something? No, I'm, I'm good. Interesting. There's a message from Garrick on my monitor here. Text only. He wants you to meet him at his old tailor shop. Maybe he's had enough of politics and wants to get back in the fashion game. Probably more profitable in the long run. And easier on the nerves. Garrick wants to see me. What for exactly? I wouldn't keep him waiting if I were you. He looks for secrets when he gets bored, and trust me, he's not the person you want poking around in your business. No, I believe you. I, I'm going to go check this out. I might be back for a drink. Oh no, what's he found out about me? Oh look, <laughs> Kumarki's here talking to him. Oh no, Kumarki's here talking to him. <clears throat> hey, Captain, hectic day out there. It's but why are you talking to Garrick? What, what's going on? The conflict may be over, but there's still plenty of work to be done. The Lucari have offered to help the Herc restore their homeworld ecosystem, and they've accepted. Dr. Bashir will be working with us on this. It, it's our goal to ensure that no Herc will go without nourishment again. <laughs> An admirable goal, actually, and 
probably best for everyone. Some time ago, I hoped for a path to peaceful resolution to our troubles with the Herc. I'm happy to be part of such a solution, at last. Thank you for your efforts in getting us all to this point. To peace. I would toast to that, but it seems we don't have any drinks. We should fix that. Thank you for meeting me here. Strangely, I find it easy to center myself in this shop. Even relax. I imagine it's got something to do with simpler times. Less responsibilities, Counselor. Quite so. Cardassia is about to begin a new journey, as it were. And I'll be going along for the ride. Oh, a new direction for Cardassia? Sounds enigmatic and exciting. Oh, it is. Cardassia has been offered membership in the Alliance, and we've accepted. Our seat at the table was hard-earned, but we're ready and grateful to join the ongoing efforts. Officer exchange programs have already begun. In fact, I suspect you'll be seeing more Cardassian faces in the future. I hope you show them the same courtesy as you've shown me in our shared adventures. I think that will be good for both parties, but tell me, what happens to Cardassia's most famous counselor now, then? Oh, I'll be spending time on Earth, Kronos and New Romulus. The life of an ambassador is never dull, after all. Someone needs to make sure the Alliance doesn't forget about Cardassia, and I suppose that someone is me. I'll be sure to follow your exploits, of course. They'll be far more entertaining than economic forecasts and state functions, to be sure. Thank you. I, I think. I'm not a time agent. I believe our fearless leaders would like to have a word with you next. So interesting. Cardassia is joining the Alliance, alongside the Romulan Republic, the Federation and the Klingons. I think it will be good for all parties involved. It's far enough from UFP membership to placate the old guard of Cardassia, but close enough to still be able to support one another. There have been some significant diplomatic events since your return from the Gamma Quadrant. Wasn't me. First, the Dominion is joining the Alliance. Having them as allies will take some getting used to, but the opportunity was too great to ignore. Yes, I heard as such. We had a lot to go through. As a condition to joining the Alliance, we requested that the Founders take steps to free the Jem'Hadar from their addiction to Ketracel White. I'm happy to say that Ambassador Odo is inclined to comply with that request. It will make things interesting in the Gamma Quadrant, to be sure. Still, it's been a long time coming. The Jem'Hadar should be able to live their lives freely. Yeah, it's a start at least. There are of course the many other powers that the Dominion held in check with fear. They'll have to be placated or addressed somehow. Chancellor Jumpok? The Harvest Cool Sector has been designated as independent from the Dominion, and a Herc neutral zone has been established around it. The Empire will join the Federation and the Republic in keeping the peace between the Dominion and the Herc. We have experience in enforcing a neutral zone, after all. Oh, I would really have no idea about the 23rd century Klingon neutral zone. But yes, Martok's contribution did indeed help Martok's us. Martok's use of the beacon and the return of the blade has led to a renewed interest in Kalos throughout the Empire. Some say that Martok stands with honor next to great heroes like Tukuvma, Vok, Lorel, and Kang. As if getting along with a stubborn old Targ wasn't difficult enough. His ego will be larger than Mount Hamar at this rate. It is fortunate that Martok has little in the way of political aspirations. Otherwise, I may need to kill him. Again. Ha! <laughs> I, I, I can't tell if you're joking or if this is just Klingon politics. But to be fair, you both have your strengths and you do work well to make the Empire stronger. Ah, Titan. I have initiated a dialogue between the Dominion and the Karema. In light of recent events, I feel it is imperative that their conflict is resolved peacefully. Whether that results in an independent Karema or not remains to be seen, but I shall endeavor to help them reach a result that is beneficial for both parties. I was just voicing these concerns to Admiral Quinn. It's good to know that they're being taken care of. 
But finally we get a message from the armager that Bashir was looking for us. Clearly not very observant, we're just over here. So while the Dominion is indeed joining this alliance of ours, it's probably going to be a prickly affair. Then again, the KDF, the Romulans, the Cardassians, what a peace treat is for, if not for bringing an end to enemies. There are bound to be many hurts to be healed from the 2000 year reign of the Dominion, but with Odo at its centre? Promising. Doctor? Things are finally settling down around here. Well, as much as it ever settles down, that is. Couldn't help noticing you're still in uniform, Doctor. Ah, uh, well, there's a lot to be done with the Herc, and being part of Starfleet will help me make things happen in that regard. When I'm not here, I'll be working with the Lucari and the crew of the USS Aventine to help the Herc get back on their feet. Aventine? Good ship are here, very fast. That was cool. It is oh, very deep into the Gamma Quadrant. That's a long way away. Indeed, but I happen to be married to the captain of the Aventine, so it won't be, you know, too bad. The kids won't be joining us until Kumake and her team restore Havas cool to a more habitable state, however. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon. But until then, be safe out there. Doctor's orders. Well, thank you. It'd be nice if it were that simple. The Dominion is about to go through a number of changes. Liberating the Jem'Hadar from the White, phasing out the Founder's benevolent dictatorship, establishing a safe haven for the Herc. Needless to say, I'm going to be very busy for quite some time. Good, it'll keep you busy. Although I imagine a lot of these changes won't be smooth, even internally amongst the Dominion. No. There are still a number of founders within the Great Link who will be very resistant to change. I'd like to think they're outnumbered by those willing to take a more democratic approach, however. The last thing anyone needs is a Dominion civil war. Yeah, agreed. The last thing anyone needs right now is a civil war. Also, not all of the Herc were cured. We'll be dealing with rogue swarms for some time. I hope we can call on you in the future if we run into that special kind of trouble you have a talent for dealing with. Oh, and speaking of trouble, you might keep an eye on Quark. That little act of heroism with the Sword of Kalis will make him bolder than ever. Yeah, I don't know how he got that. That, But I'll keep an eye on him, Constable. So, with our goodbyes said, we are free to return to our ship and oversee its repairs as this chapter of Star Trek Online comes to a close. There are still adventures to be had, centred around the Klingon Empire and its recent political turmoil, so perhaps a Klingon perspective will be needed. I'll probably be working on covering the Klingon introductory missions, which were overhauled recently and I've not been through them all since that change. So I'm a little curious myself. But until then, thank you for joining me on this adventure and the adventures of the USS Armager as we delve through the ever-growing narrative of Star Trek Online. <laughs> and I'll see you next time for another part. Until then, I've been Rick. Thanks again, and goodbye. The future of the Dominion is uncertain for the first time in many years. Without the Founder and her unbreakable will at the center of it all, the Gamma Quadrant will undoubtedly go through a great deal of turmoil. I'll do what I can to maintain order and keep the peace, but it's going to be challenging, to say the least. For now, what matters to me is that you fought for the Dominion when we needed it the most. I won't forget that. And thanks to the Great Link, neither will the Founders. Thank you. I hope we meet again under much better circumstances.